Cesia. These are the two books uh, that are very important for understanding physics and equipment. Anesthesia machines have evolved from simple boil machines uh, to more complex machines uh, which are now computer controlled. And so has monitoring evolved from basic monitoring to a very co complex continuous uh, monitoring uh, we do for anesthesia. So if you look at the machine, but the machine looks very complex, uh, but in real since it is actually very simple, we have a delivery system uh, like pipelines or cylinders and uh, then flow mode meters to control the flows, uh, vaporizers to deliver the anesthetic and the interface between the machine and the patient is the uh, anesthesia circuit. And ultimately it is uh, the uh, flows that pass through the vaporizers which carry the anesthetic gases which keeps the patient's uh, sleep. So machines are very very important uh, for delivery of oxygen and anesthesia gases. So if you look at the uh, whole anesthesia machine uh, they can be divided into four parts. So you have the supply, processing, delivery and disposal. So if you look at the gas supply sources uh, we have the uh, vacuum Insulative evaporators, we supply the oxygen through the pipelines. You can also get uh, oxygen to the pipeline through manifold, which is actually a bank of cylinders. And then uh, we have the cylinders, uh, which can be connected directly to the machine. And because the cylinders are at a high pressure, you need a pressure reducing valve, PRE, uh, to uh, supply the gases to the machine. In the machine, uh, these gases are processed uh, via the flow meters uh, where the control flow can be delivered. And there is also oxygen flush that actually bypasses the uh, flow meter and the vaporizers and uh, the gases are delivered. The oxygen basically is delivered directly to the uh, common gas outlet or CGO. <coughs> In the delivery system basically the gases are uh, then delivered to the patient uh, with a breathing system uh, which is the interface between the machine and the patient and the gases uh, which are not required by the patient or which needed to be vented out or disposed of using a scavenging system there are uh, also other processes uh, which actually are included within that. Uh, they might be monitoring of the flows, uh, monitoring of the anesthetic gases that all come within the processing unit. Uh, so it is a lot more complex than this, but this is uh, just simplifying the whole anesthesia machine system. So this is known as the SPDD model. Okay, so supply is basically how do gases come to the anesthesia machine? or how does this gas is delivered. So they come as we described from the pipeline and to the pipeline they can come from the vacuum insulated evaporator or they can come from a bank of cylinders from the manifold room or they may come directly from cylinders where there's no pipeline they can come from cylinders. Then uh, processing uh, how uh, the anesthesia machine prepares gases before they are delivered to the patients. And this might include a few safety features uh, like uh, fail-safe devices or oxygen pressure failure devices, uh, low oxygen pressure alarms, oxygen flushes. And then uh, we have the flow meters uh, in the uh, machines. There are also systems to uh, drive ventilators, the gases that drive the ventilator. They can be hypoxy guard, which is again another safety feature. Then some machines also have second stage regulators to reduce the pressure within the system. And there are check valves, uh, distills to the vaporizers okay, that prevent the back pressure into the vaporizer. And they have the vaporizer. And then all this is delivered to the common gas outlet. So uh, delivery uh, says, uh, part uh, obviously includes uh, the common gas outlets uh, where the breathing circuits are connected uh, to the uh, 
common gas outlet, uh, which can be no rebreathing of circle system. And circle system also has carbon dioxide absorber soda line. And then you can actually have also have ventilators, which can drive uh, the gases. So instead of the back, the ventilators drive the gases. There's some integral monitors, uh, which are connected uh, to the common gas outlet or to the breathing systems like oxygen analyzers, uh, disconnection alarms, uh, spirometry, capnography, airway pressures, monitor, ventilator alarms, uh, PEEP devices. And it can also have additional means of humidification other than the circle system. And disposal, how do the gases get disposed? Uh, obviously these are by the scavenger system and uh, which can be a closed system uh, and closed system can be active and passive and they're open system. Uh, scavenging system may not be present in all situations and where the scavenging system are not present, closed circuits are very useful where we can deliver uh, very low flows and reduce the uh, contamination of the uh, environment. Looking at the source, uh, like I said, the source of the gases to the pipeline comes from the vacuum insulated evaporator and uh, what you see on the screen that is the uh, vacuum insulated evaporator and uh, this is outside the hospital it is enclosed and there is safety involved uh, in that nobody is allowed around it and uh, it stands on a special uh, kind of a flooring tarmac so what exactly is uh, VIE or vacuum insulated evaporator, how does it work and how is the latent heat of vaporization important here, what are the components and how does it go with excess demand, for example uh, in the winter time or when you have 20 theaters running at the same time and you have patients on ventilators, how does this uh, in a work. So if you look at the vacuum insulated evaporator, basically it's like a flask. Okay, so we have a inner flask which contains the uh, liquid oxygen. Uh, this is made of stainless steel. And then uh, you have the outer uh, part which is made of uh, carbon steel. And yes, it is a vacuum uh, between that, but this vacuum is, is packed with something called perlite, which is an insulating powder. And if you look at the whole system, uh, what we have is uh, the uh, there's a filling port to the liquid oxygen. And we also have the operation stock of the liquid oxygen and the reserve stock. And uh, this is held at minus 183 degrees and the uh, gaseous form is at around 180 psi. When there is less demand and the temperature outside is high, you can actually get uh, excess formation of the gases. And in that case, there is also a safety valve to vent out the excess gas. And to know uh, how what is the uh, amount of uh, liquid uh, oxygen within the system, uh, we have a differential pressure transducer, also known as Barton Gold. So it measures the pressure above and below the liquid level. And these uh, gases actually uh, pass into the uh, outlets uh, via the vaporizers. And when there is increased demand, there is also uh, important uh, thing called super vaporizers, which actually draw in liquid from below and uh, then using the latent heat of vaporization. Uh, add the additional amount uh, to the uh, pipeline. At the outlet bar, the pressure is uh, 1055 kPa or 10.5 bar or 150 psi. And uh, from the control panel, uh, then we can actually have secondary supply cylinders from the manifold room. So when even after the excess demand is not met, you can have uh, the oxygen secondary supply cylinders in the manifold room. Uh, which can supply the excess amount of gases. And the out output to the pipeline is usually uh, lowered further from 10.5 bar or uh, 150 psi to uh, 60 psi or uh, 420 kPa or almost 4 bar.
when the gases like reach the uh, theaters, uh, they, the outlets from theaters, and uh, they are very specific for the gases. And uh, these are known as Schneider's uh, quick couplers. So these are the outlet. And uh, these are the pipeline which connect the machine to the uh, outlets from the wall. So that's for oxygen, that's for nitrous oxide, and that is one is for the scavenging. Uh, this is just a uh, closer look at the uh, Schneider quick couplers. And this are the ring when you once you press the ring, and you can uh, take the disconnect and the oxygen pipeline or the nitrous oxide pipeline uh, from the machines. Uh, these are the pendants hanging uh, from the wall, uh, the similar things. Again, you have the white one, uh, which is oxygen, blue one for the nitrous oxide. Uh, you have the black and white, that's for the air. And you have the yellow ones, uh, these are for the suction. And uh, you have uh, this uh, big, bigger white one, which is the, the suction uh, for scavenging system or active scavenging system. From the wall, uh, the pipelines are connected at the back of the machines and uh, these are the non-interchangeable screw thread uh, kind of um, safety mechanism. Uh, the one in this narrow uh, quick couplers is known as the uh, diameter index safety system, DISS, and whereas this is the NIST or the non-interchangeable screw threads. From the machine, uh, we come to the uh, pressure regulators or cylinders and pressure regulators. Uh, so cylinders are seen at the back of the machine and these are the uh, secondary supply system. If But they become the primary uh, supply system if you don't have the uh, pipeline. And for the cylinders, you need to know the size, volume, and pressures. Uh, you need to know what the components of cylinders are, what are they made of, uh, what material, and how do you test them. Also, we need to know our filling ratio. Uh, filling ratio is the weight of substance with which it is actually filled, divided by weight of water it could hold. And so in temperate uh, climate, it's 0 0.75. Uh, Whereas in the tropical, it is uh, 0 0.67. So only 67% of the cylinder is filled with the gases. Whereas in temperate, you can fill up to 75%. So if you look at the cylinder pressure, it's very important to note uh, the cylinder pressures of the oxygen, which is uh, in either in PSI, uh, it's 1987 PSI or 137 bar. Nitrous oxide uh, is at 638 uh, PSI or 44 bar, whereas carbon dioxide is at 725 psi or 50 bar. So if you look at the oxygen, helium, air, uh, antinox or heliox, they're all at the same pressure, 137 bar. So all you need to know is three values, uh, 137 bar, uh, 44 bar and 50 bar. 54 for carbon dioxide, which we don't use nowadays. So basically, I think you just need to know two values for nitrous oxide, which is 44 bar, and uh, for oxygen, which is 137 bar. And if we look at the uh, cylinders, there are in various sizes. We got C, D, E, F, G, and J, and each of them have their own capacity. So all you need to remember is uh, type D and the uh, rest of them are just multiples of the D. So type D cylinder, uh, if you look at oxygen, contains 340 liters of the oxygen, uh, whereas nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, helium, they're all, uh, well, nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, 900, uh, whereas helium is 300. E is twice the uh, D, F is four times, G is 10 times, and J is 20 times. So from that you can now, so if you remember uh, the uh, volume of oxygen held 
in D type cylinders you can uh, roughly calculate the amount volume and then the rest of the cylinders if you know the conversion factors C is half of uh, uh, D now the testing of the cylinders is uh, very important and uh, so every hundred cylinder uh, is uh, cut into strips and is tested at the manufacturers uh, for tensile strength and each cylinder not the hundred but every cylinder is tested five yearly to withstand very high pressure of about 200 to 250 bars and this is known as hydraulic testing so you have hydraulic testing and tensile strength testing strength testing and all cylinders are inspected uh, from inside uh, using an endoscope to look for any cracks uh, in the uh, wall. Uh, coming to the uh, processing of the gases, uh, the most important one is uh, pressure regulators. And these are the newer modern type of pressure regulators. Uh, the olden types uh, came uh, with the pressure gauge whereas here it is used the electronic system to monitor the pressure. So if you look at the uh, pressure regulators, uh, we basically have a two chambers and uh, each of these chambers is uh, divided. So the upper chamber is the, is the low pressure chamber and low is the high pressure chamber. And they are linked uh, via a diaphragm. Uh, the one, the diaphragm in the high pressure chamber is large, uh, whereas the diaphragm in the lower chamber is uh, small, represented by with the area of uh, small a and capital A. And then we have a spring which acts on both the diaphragms. Okay, this is the force that acts on the diaphragm. And as I said, when the pressure, the high pressure cylinder is attached to the pressure regulator, this high pressure acts on the small area A. And this is balanced uh, by the large area diaphragm and the smaller pressure. So basically, it's uh, a balance between the force. Now, we know that pressure is uh, nothing uh, but force acting over unit area. Uh, so force is a product of the pressure and area. So this large pressure into a small area will be balanced by the large area and smaller pressure. And so this is this is how the uh, your uh, pressure regulators work. Uh, flow meters, uh, we have seen different types of flow meters. Um, in this case, I have shown a flow meter that uses a, a ball. But most of the times, we actually see flow meters uh, which have a revolving uh, float. So if you look at the shape of the uh, flow meter, these flow meters are uh, in a conical shape. And these are known as Thorpe's tube. And if you look at the flow uh, in the lower part of the tube, uh, which is more regular at the, at the bottom, it acts like a tube. And so flow is uh, dependent on the viscosity and uh, the differential pressure. So lower part acts like a tube, whereas when you go higher up, as the flow increases, it becomes turbulent. And uh, that is because if you look at the cross section, it's more of an annular cross section rather than a tube. Uh, and hence, flow here is dependent on density of the gas and the uh, your differential pressure uh, difference. So now if you look at uh, on what basis uh, the uh, flow meter or the bobbins work, 
the mass of the bobbin uh, is acting downwards. Uh, so we know that force is mass into acceleration. So the uh, gravity acts tend to pull the uh, mass down, mass of the bobbin down. Uh, but the flow uh, through the constrictor, which goes through the flow meter, okay, acts on the area of the bobbin. And uh, like we said, force is nothing but uh, sorry the pressure uh, acting over uh, is uh, force acting over unit area and hence the force is a product of the pressure and the area so the force that is produced by the uh, mass of the bobbin and uh, the drag of the gravity is balanced by the force generated by the pressure of the gases acting on the small area so it's uh, a balance and that, that's why uh, it will be hanging uh, and revolving in the, in the air. The, f the bobbins also actually have flutes and, uh, across it, and that's why you can actually see that. And they also have a dot on that, which is where we actually see the readings. Yeah. So there are a few equations, very, very important, we all need to know. Uh, a flow is nothing but a volume change per unit time. Flow is also defined as pressure over resistance, or we can say that pressure is a product of flow times resistance. Uh, mass is a product of volume into density. Uh, force we know is uh, mass into acceleration, but it's also pressure times the area. Or uh, pressure is nothing but force acting over unit area. Uh, thank you. Uh, with this, we'll finish this lecture and uh, we will continue with the applied physics in the next lecture.